I feel like I am in that lineage of black artists that want to paint that picture of what it means to be black and beautiful in this country. I am Derek Barnes. I'm a writer, I'm a family man, I'm a difference maker, and I am black and unlimited. I grew up in the middle of the country, man, in Kansas City, Missouri. My mother raised me by herself. She's a very hardworking woman. You know, she was only off two days a week. But on Saturday morning, she would walk me to the library. She was my first fan, man. She was the first person to introduce me to literature. I started writing when I was 10. At that time, the writing idea was a uh, hip hop lyric. You know, rap is just a child of poetry. So and my teacher, she introduced us to writers from the Harlem Renaissance. Uh, Langston Hughes, you know, Nella Larson, Zora Neale Hurston. That was the first time that I was introduced to black literature. And that day changed my life. I felt like I became a writer that day. In 2010, my first middle grade novel came out entitled We Could Be Brothers. But between 2011 and 2017, I didn't have any books to come out. It was rough being in that valley. But I kept writing. During that seven year span, I wrote like 35 books. I would not give up on myself. I'm so glad I didn't because in the fall of 2016, I wrote the poem that ended up being the text for Crown and Ode to the Fresh Cut. And it became an instant hit. Being somebody whose career didn't take off until I was 42, now it feels like everything is opening up to me. And I look at the books that are out and I try to fill those holes. Like whose story is not being told, you know? I think every child deserves the right to go to a bookstore or a library and see themselves on the covers of the books that they read. I feel amazing that a child can go into Walmart into the book section and see Crown and Ode to the First Cut or I Am Every Good Thing or The Queen or King of Kindergarten. I have two books about going to kindergarten, you know, for the first time. Walmart was just the first entity that popped in my mind in regards to going back to school. Jackson State University, the I love forever. And it was probably the greatest decision of my life to go there. By thinking about the history, thinking about the people that were walking these same steps before me, it's a uh, privilege, not only to be a student at Jackson State, but any historically black college. I wouldn't trade that experience for nothing in the world. And I've been able to do things that I only could have dreamed about when I was a student at you know, Jackson State. I want people to see me as somebody that was brave and wrote unapologetically black about issues that affect black people. Even more than that, I, I care about my sons and the way they see me as a man. I care about my wife and the way she sees me as her partner. That's where my legacy will lie. Being black and unlimited, you know, to me, means that we're all born with a talent, a gift. It's our obligation to use that gift to make the world better. Be unapologetically black, be unapologetically true, and make sure your messages are centered in love. But don't hold back. I'm gonna create beautiful black stories centered around the brilliance of black children for as long as I can, for as long as I can type.